Confident Campers, I'm Gabby and welcome to my channel. If you didn't know, I've been attending the same sleepaway camp since I was 12 years old. I mean, unless you're brand new here, you definitely knew that because it's literally all I talk about. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, my camp was canceled this summer. One of the things I miss most about camp is going on hikes. I'm so grateful for all the hikes I've gotten to do at camp and all the amazing experiences I get to look back on now. Most of the hikes were super awesome, but some were, um... Not. <laughs> Today I'd like to share a hiking story with you where things did not go as planned. This is one of my most popular stories, so today I'd like to share it with you, but a little differently than I tell stories on TikTok. I thought it could be fun to share my most popular hiking story while actually going on a hike. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. As always, don't forget to click that subscribe button and do whatever else the creators are saying these days. I can't keep up. Now come join me and my friends as I recount the infamous tale of the longest hike at camp. One of my favorite things to do at camp is go on hikes. So when the hike to Bald Spot was scheduled for my group in 2015, I was very excited. Well, not quite as excited as my camper who loves hikes more than anything, but still excited. On the morning of the hike, I was walking around reminding my campers to put on high socks and bring a water bottle. They needed a lot of reminders considering they were six, seven, eight years old. A kid suddenly walked up to me and whispered, somebody in my area threw up last night all over her bed. I looked over my shoulder and sure enough, she was right. It was the camper who loves hikes. She tried to convince me it was just dirt, but it obviously wasn't. Apparently she threw up in the middle of the night, but didn't tell anyone because she thought if we knew, then she'd have to miss the hike. She kept trying to tell me she was fine, but I'm not a doctor, so I took her to the house center to get checked out. I guess she was feeling better after all because the nurse approved her request to still go on the hike. This camper was very excited. Little did we know at the time that that hike definitely would have been worth missing. What should have been a 45 minute hike ended up taking four hours. And it was the longest four hours of our lives. Anyways, we left the house center and made our way to the dining room where our campers had already started eating breakfast. When everyone finished, it was time to prepare for the hike. All the campers grabbed some fruit, filled their water bottles, used the restroom, and then a camper realized she forgot something in the cabin, so the counselor took her back to get it. But when the counselor realized what she had forgotten, she told the camper, this is not necessary to bring on the hike. It was a magnifying glass, definitely not a necessity. She was about to throw a fit, but the counselor said, whatever, you're gonna hold it and I will not hold it for you. The rest of the kids went to the bathroom again because they had taken so long, and then we finally made it to the start of the trail. The hike was immediately off to a rocky start as two campers began to cry when they realized how many bugs are in the woods. One counselor consoled them as the rest of us tried to enjoy the hike. A mere moment later, the girl who insisted on bringing her magnifying glass on the hike started screaming because her shoe had fallen off. It turns out she was wearing shoes that were two sizes too big, which we were constantly reminded of as her shoes fell off every 10 steps. This kid then tried to convince her counselor to hold her magnifying glass and threw a tantrum when she said no. Shocker, I know. Meanwhile, another camper decided after 20 minutes she didn't feel like moving anymore, so she sat on the ground, a stunt she pulled quite often. A counselor attempted to get her to stand up, but she refused to move. Five minutes passed, and she stood up and walked on as if nothing had happened. The hike continued, and yes, the kids who hate bugs were still crying, and the girls still didn't want to hold their magnifying glass, but overall, things were moving along. Well, until my camper decided to sit down again. And again. And again. One of the counselors ended up needing to become her buddy and stay behind with her every time she sat down, because she did it a lot and we were already significantly behind schedule. After an hour of what was turning into the slowest hike to bald spot in the history of humanity, one of my campers started swinging on a tree. Her twin sister told her to stop, but when she refused, her sister slapped her. They broke out into a full-on fist fight. Between the crying, the big shoes, the girl who won't be moved, and the wannabe UFC fighters, it didn't seem like anything else could go wrong. Welp, another camper had a very small bladder, and due to a medical condition, she was unable to squat in the woods to relieve herself. Since she had to pee every 30 minutes, the whole group had to stop and wait as two counselors held this child above the ground so she could pee. Obviously, this is to no fault of her own, but it was definitely an added challenge given everything else that was going on. I wanted to tell the kids that the counselors were also so over it, but you know, I couldn't. Professionalism. Being as we were only meant to be on the hike for 45 minutes, everyone had already run out of water and finished all of their snacks by the time we made it to the top. We hung out at the top to take in the view, which honestly was the only highlight of this whole experience. And then we finally started our journey back to camp. The counselors were so done, but since the kids were complaining, we had to pretend like we were fine, even though we were screaming on the inside. It's been four hours at this point, and all we can think about is making it back on time for lunch. We continued down the mountain when suddenly another camper shouted, I just got stung by something. I checked her arm out, but nothing looked unusual, so I asked another counselor to take a look, but she didn't notice anything either. We told the camper it's probably just a bite, and even if it is a sting, you're not allergic, you'll be fine. As I was telling her we'd get her ice when we got to lunch, the other counselor realized the trash bag she had been holding was upside down. We looked back to see a trail of used toilet paper behind us on the ground. After cleaning it up, we continued our descent with the little energy we had left. Just before we made it back to camp, I looked at my camper's arm again, and lo and behold, it was swollen. She had been stung by a bee. 
Oops. When we finally arrived back at camp, the hiking specialist told me that out of the decades he's worked at camp, this was the worst hike he'd ever led. I cautiously asked my camper who had thrown up the night before if she was still glad she got to come with us on the hike. And she said, it was the longest hike I've ever been on. And it was awesome. Fun fact, this hike you're watching right now also took us four hours, but luckily nothing went wrong on that hike. Oof, I'm exhausted. Okay, we actually went on that hike two days ago, but I'm still sore. That's one of my favorite stories to tell, so leave a comment down below letting me know your favorite part. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!